Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the South Lake Conservation Commission uh, special Monday, June 26, 2023 meeting. It is seven o'clock. Uh, the meeting is taking place in the town hall in, I don't know, conference room, what? Three. Conference room three, as well as uh, the uh, uh, Zoom. So thank you for joining in person, as well as those that are here on. Uh, why don't we go ahead and do a roll call around the table for commissioners that are well uh, here. So, Warren Cheever, Dave McWilliams. Just a note: we also have Sabrina Coordinator and Jean Nielsen, the secretary, here with us. So, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the minutes from the last meeting? Is anybody going ahead and had an opportunity to read through these? Are there any uh, adjustments that need to be made? You're fired. <laughs> Norm's got the rest of them. <laughs> All right. Anybody else see anything? Yeah. I barely did anything. All right. We don't have any other changes or additions to the minutes. Uh, I'll take a motion. Make a motion to accept the minutes. We'll met. Make the motion. Do I have a second? Norm seconds. Norm seconds. Andy. Aye. Dave, aye. Jerry, aye. Kevin, aye. All right. So moved. One down. So weird not being able to look at the computer time. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go a bit out of order. Oh, let's not do that. So before we go into anything else, anybody either here or online have any public comments? Anything they want to share with the group as well as uh, the group online? Is there anybody online raising their hand? I don't see any hands. Okay. Yep. All right, so we're going to go past that. So going out of uh, going out of line because we have a uh, out of order because we have a couple of minutes before the first public hearing. Thank you, uh, Norm. You went down to one forty one Congamon Road to take a look at the silt fence. I did. Jerry came along too. And what did you guys say? Was it we, no, was it last Tuesday? Yeah. I arrived around 8.30, the fill fence had already been taken down and the fill truck material had been moved and was being restaked. Um, we did have a discussion about uh, the missing trees. They were in fact missing, they were eaten by beavers. Uh, all but one had been really? Yeah, it all, it, Wow. Yeah, all but one had been replaced and they put a wire fence around them so yeah. the beavers couldn't get them. So we had them. one more to replace. Mm -hmm. Before Jerry arrived, he gave me a tour of the inside. He's got a heck of a lot of work yet to be done. Yeah, I don't see that thing. I don't think he said he's still hoping to open for the 4th of July, but that's an extreme long shot based upon how many trucks, workmen I haven't seen there in the last week. Uh, yeah. It's not going to happen. Okay. Now he did uh, request one thing. He said that um, you know if, if I saw anything or if Jerry saw anything we weren't happy with, please raise it. And the only thing that I mentioned to him was the filtrex material because it was in the water mm -hmm. isn't going to see. Right. And it's not guaranteed because uh, that could be a concern of the commission. Okay. Okay. What was so, his reply? Huh? Did you did you get a reply from him? He did not give me any reply that I'm not really. you, Jerry. Not really. He just kind of admitted that. He... Right. Because it isn't waterlogged. Okay. Well, you know. well, I know he's looking for a full certificate of compliance, so we'll take that up with him when he comes in for that. Okay. All right. But thank you both for going out there sure. and taking a look at that. Appreciate that. Um, but you feel he did what we asked him to do at the last meeting? Yeah. Yes. I would say so, yeah. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. All right. So the first thing we have is a continuation for uh, 662A College Highway. It's a notice of intent. Um, 
Hi, how are you doing? Um, yeah, my name is uh, Jim Boyle, and uh, we're here for the continuation of 662 College Highway. And uh, what we're hoping to do tonight is I have a couple of things on the plan that uh, are need to be determined after we kind of figure out where the uh, wetlands lines are. So I just want to maybe tonight talk about the walk around that we had um, a couple weeks ago and, you know, see if that, you know, is going to be fine and then just go from here. So uh, with me is uh, Dan Meech, the wetland scientist at the delineation. So take it Thank you. I've recused myself. Okay. Just want to make sure that's on the record. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you guys? Good. Good to see you again. Good. Good to see you as well. I don't have anything to add. We just locally just want to talk about the field walk and what sort of. Uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, who was on that walk? It was you and I. Jerry, Norm, and uh, Dennis. Dennis is not time. here. Yeah. You know, Sabrina and I have talked. I think we have, when we're looking at the different wetland indicators, there's a couple of them there, and I know a few of them are under dispute. Uh, we would feel very comfortable if we can get a peer review of the property. All right, have somebody uh, allocated or chosen by the town to go in and just do a double check. We don't want to necessarily keep you from moving forward. We just want to make sure that we're protecting what's there. All right. Or could we, or we, what was the concern? And we could take a second look at it if there's something that you're thinking is a concern and see if it can be adjusted or, you know, and so I want to try to address your concerns but at the same time follow the rules. Yeah, I just think that we saw some plants in areas where we thought there was hydrology and you said there wasn't and that when we're talking about multiple indicators that you know there should be two and in some places there was one in some places there were two and i think we just had some areas of dispute and again we would just be and i know you're going back for the planning board anyway so i believe there's a little bit of time anyways but we would just love to have somebody go in there and just put a second set of eyes on it uh, that's fine and all that stuff, but um, uh, is there an area that you you could actually tell us where it is? I mean, because as we walked through, my shoes were not wet and stuff, and so uh, Sabrina said she saw water, but I did not. And you know, so uh, we were all out there mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So um, it's kind of simple just to ask for a peer review, but you guys were all out there with us, and there was no water on top of the plant. There was no standing water at the time. You're, in some areas, more to the right when we moved over towards the church, I believe there was some wet areas. Um, when we first started, correct? Yeah. And as we moved away, it was certainly much less so. Yeah. Right. But that water's going somewhere, and there's the abutting wetlands over next to the O'Reilly. So there's some sort of connectivity between the two of those. And we just want to make sure that if you're going to be doing any work, that you're not in it. I feel like we have a confidence. And you guys were out there with us. And I, I mean, you were agreeing with Dan and he was talking. I don't necessarily know as though we were agreeing. We were hearing him, but I don't know as though there was necessarily a 100% agreement with was what was going on. I think a lot of it is, you know, go out, see what's going on, take it back and have, you know, think about it. I just, I'm not comfortable with the delineation as it is. That's me personally, but there's other members that were out there that day as well. So this is my opinion. This is not the entire commission's opinion. That's my opinion. Can I ask what Dennis's opinion is and why he, why was he out there? What? Um, uh, pardon Dennis me? Was there. Okay. Dennis was uh, there. Yeah, I won't speak for Dennis, uh, but Dennis was there. Dennis was there as a citizen. You know, private citizens are allowed to come on site visits with us. It's to benefit the town, any work that's being done in the town. Um, and Dennis has experience for previous projects and uh, delineations that were done there, but I won't speak for Dennis, you know, what his opinion was. He, he spoke to you that day as well, so. It seems a little odd that he, he brought him out there. He wouldn't have, he didn't say anything about how he thought, didn't agree or disagree or. No, I mean, if he was here, I would ask him to speak yeah. up, but sure. he's not. Yeah. So, you know, the private conversation he had with me, I think he agrees with what I'm saying, but I'm not going to say that on the record for him because he's not here to speak for okay. himself. No, he's not. Okay. 
So Sabrina had told me uh, last week that we could pick our own person to do the um, the peer review. That's yeah, that. like is you could pick somebody, or do we want to pick somebody? Who do you? I mean, I think we would want to see who you're choosing. Yeah. <clears throat> Send a resume to you. Yeah. Did you get a hold of Kate? Yeah. Did you get a hold of Kate? Um, we didn't call. Okay. No. I have a, also like a list that you guys can. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to hear the other uh, board members' opinions though. They're out there. Um, and most of them seem to agree with you, and I think we're speaking. I mean, when we're out there, I mean, how can we point like this out? That's where we're there. Well, I, we had questions. I know I, I asked a few. I was, it was kind of a learning experience for me. You know, you guys obviously know your stuff, but there were things that I didn't know about, and I have to defer to people that actually do have that kind of knowledge. So well, we were doing walk out a walk around to help to, you know, we're kind of partner up with town here, right. not to be against anybody. Part of what part of we can't do deliberations in the field. Okay. We can discuss things and ask questions and then discuss it amongst ourselves. Okay. <clears throat> because then we're violating open meeting. So we can ask questions, retain that information, and then we can have it back here in open meeting where it's open to the public. Uh, and I do respect your expertise. I did learn a lot listening to you. No, I appreciate that. And no, I know. It's, it, if you don't understand it, it's sort of hard to it, it va value judge whether it's it's legit or not. I, I get that. Mm -hmm. I get that. But I, I did appreciate that. I wanted to let you know. So before the next meeting, we'll get you to, uh, some resumes or a resume of a person we're considering or would like you to consider uh, to do that peer review. So, you know, so that we can at least have that, move that forward for that next meeting. Okay. Where you can make a decision whether that person or the camera will be. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So we'll, we'll continue that until the next yeah. meeting, which is July. And probably 17th. Oh, 17th, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So, Good. do we have, I might have a question about the invasive removal? Yeah. So, um, for the re canary grass, yeah. you guys had mentioned you wanted to treat it with herbicide mm -hmm. about three to four weeks before you wanted to start on the wetland reclamation area. Right. And that was also, was it a 25 foot border around where you wanted the wetland? Right. Yeah, just so they don't creep in. Right. Right. So I have a couple questions on that as far as um, do you know which herbicide you're going to be using? Glyphosate. Uh, that, that's the active ingredient in okay. your, your Roundup and Rodeo. Rodeo is a commercial version of Roundup. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then also, what's your what is your end goal for the treatment? Do you want to try to completely eradicate it? Or? No, okay. I wanted to slow them down from getting into our replication area so we can achieve the 75% without invasive growth. I believe we have down um, 75 or 80% plants, wetland plants, so that would believe 15 to 20% invasives would be allowed in there. The Army Corps allows up to That was standard we were looking for. So I just want to slow them down from getting in. So during the three, the two growing seasons, we have to keep an eye on them. Mm -hmm. We won't have reed canary grass. And, and to be honest with you, when I see them come up, I pull them out of the ground. Okay. I mean, that's another management tool while I'm doing the inspections. Right, right. So do you have any plans? I mean, you did just mention like pulling them out, but what about the sleep bank underneath? Because once these guys get exposed to sunlight, they start like coming back up like crazy. So do you have any plans for the seed bank at all? We have no control over that seed bank. Plus every fall, re canary grass is going to blow seeds all over the place. Right. By getting the wetland established with a mulch cover, we stop those seeds from getting reestablished on top of the ground. The seed will touch the mulch and won't touch the ground. It may germinate, but it won't survive right because it doesn't have enough to live off of. So there's no way we're going to stop reed canary grass in perpetuity on that site. There's right. no way you can do that. There's just too much of it around. So when you're saying you said mulch, is that going to be just in the area of the replication Correct. or also the 25? No, it's around the replication area. So you have no further treatments for the 25-foot buffer around there? We could keep doing that if you'd like during the growth, during the two years of monitoring to sort of slow them down. 
But I'm going to be honest with you. Five years after we're gone, green canary grass is going to be everywhere. But let's look at the replication area that O'Reilly put in. They have all the shrubs. There is reed canary grass growing in some of the lower elevations of their wetland, but it's still a wetland and it still has the plants that they put in there. So we're going to still be a wetland. And you can't, you know, this reality, you can't stop that reed canary grass from coming in at some point, but we can slow it down. And hopefully the plants we put in, this is what usually works, is they grow fast enough. We'll get them to establish if they can shade out, take the sun, the nutrients, and the water away from the invasives. The invasives don't get started. So the record, the wetland that's being replicated right now, um, I didn't really remember what the species were in there. Was there a weed canary grass in there as well? Were they mixed in with the natives at all? In terms of the plantings? The oh. the wetlands right now that you're oh, trying oh, yeah. to replicate. Does that have reed canary grass? Oh have, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that site's about 80% reed canary grass. So if you can average it all out, there's quite a bit of it in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean we can control it for a few years and slow it down. And like I said, I do vegetation management for airports. And the main yeah. thing is get plants established yeah. with a mulch cover and the invasives have a hard time getting started. If it's just bare earth, they're experts at taking off. Mm -hmm. So that will slow them down. It may actually stop them from taking over and the plants we put in there should then take over and they should control that area that they were planted in. I can't control the rest of the site. So that's probably still gonna stay where you can air grass. Right. Or if they, if they don't mow it again, then shrubs are gonna come in and they'll ch choke out through shade, they'll choke out the reed canary grass. But that's, you're talking 15, 20 years down the road for enough woody plants to grow out there to make it undesirable for the reed canary grass, for the grass. Okay. Yeah. But that's the long-term way it should work. We establish plants, choke out the other guys, don't let them get established, and we stay there. And they have to find someplace else to look. Basically. Just like you want at home. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Great. All right. Thank you. So we're going to just... I'm going to make a motion to continue. Second that. Lamette? Aye. Aye. Jerry? Kevin? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. So the next hearing is uh, 15 North Pond Road. Do you have the legal notice for that? There it is. Um, Jean? Mm -hmm. Do you have the legal notice for 15? Thank you. All right. So the Suffolk Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing under the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, uh, General Law 131.40 in the Suffolk Conservation Commission Regulations and Bylaw, Chapter 182 and Chapter 450 for a request for determination. The project location is 15 North Pond Road. The project is for the installation of a paved patio within 100 feet of Lake Congamon uh, taking place here and now. And who do we have for the applicant? Myself, Daniel, 15 on the road. Hello, Mr. Hess. How you doing? Good. I'm my contractor, Andy from Wyvern Construction. Right. Andy, can you just introduce yourself? Andy Hartley from Wyvern Construction. Hello, Andy. I do have some pictures of the uh, proposed patio. Uh, I might help you look at it. Yeah, so just... For... Yeah, it's, you said paved. I mean, it's not It's not asphalt. It's just going to be pavers. They're going okay. to be placed on top of the uh, the rock. The area is, is all flat. There's no runoff on it. And it's, we have a 15-foot retaining wall that's in front of the lake. That, that's been there for forever. The Where we live on the point there, we get a lot of wave action, uh, especially in North Pond. So, the, uh, so that kind of blocks it, any type of uh, the waves coming in. But the patio's right on the back of the house off of the uh, off of the foundation. And I believe it's... Uh, what's the dimensions on it? Here we go. I think it's, yeah, 26 by... 25 by... Yeah. So just really quick, so just so everybody knows, um, there's already been an NOI for this property. The project was approved. It included this patio. Um, the applicant came and requested a certificate of compliance because they were selling the home. 
uh, they were granted a certificate of compliance. You don't have to have everything done that you want to build to get your certificate of compliance. So that was granted. Um, Mr. Hess bought the property, thought that that um, order of conditions and that NOI was still active because it was on the plans to come to find out that it's not active. So we then instructed him, he had to come back into us and go over what he was doing. So I just want to reiterate, we're looking at something that was already approved by this committee. Okay. So we're just making sure that legally everything is covered. If you guys have any questions, um, but this is like kind of Groundhog Day, been there, done that, seen this. Is it the original plan that was on the original drive? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it, this has been inspected uh, every step away by Dennis Clark. He would come down and he inspected, uh, you know, the septic and mm -hmm. uh, all the site work. And this is the last piece of it. I didn't realize that my uh, neighbor Judy, that I bought it from her halfway finished. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I, I, and we were just operating under her, it was under, uh, wasn't under her name, but it, it was under like an LLC, which they transferred the building permit to myself, but the um, conservation was still in it. And she got the um, she got the money back to ten thousand, and um, but it went to her. <laughs> right. So we we were left at thinking that the permit was still in it. Like, well, that makes like, sense. I mean, they put the bond up; they want to get the bond back. Sure. Right. So I, I I get why they did that. Um. So I, I just you know anybody, how, how far along are you from? Well, you're just ready to put the papers down. That's it. Everything's all set. We just go put the papers down and we're done. Yeah. There was no wet night. It was just sand. In fact, nothing would ever grow on it. That's the reason for the pavers because they didn't want any type of you know runoff into the lake. So the pavers kind of will hold it. Because it would, uh, to have that house constructed, we had to have two giant drywalls put in. And we had that done by Crestfield. And when they did that, it, it, was, it was a big pile of sand. So this is basically uh, going to, you know, uh, cover that <laughs> sandy area is all flat, but there was never any type of wetlands in that area. When do you think you guys, if we gave you guys a thumbs up, when do you think you guys would get this done? Probably next week, week after, two weeks. Okay. And then more than nature. Yeah, I mean, our biggest concern is excavation around the lake and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. So I I'm, understand that. I'm assuming. Is yeah, we're all, any we're all set up with just batteries. Yes. Yeah. Bringing them in, setting them down, and yeah. done with it. I do believe there's still silt fences put up around there, right? Yeah, we yes. put them. Yeah, yeah. we put them all around. Up. And got to remove some of the material that's there. And that's it. Yeah, I, I mean, so it's an RDA. So you remember this one would be a negative determination for a green light to move forward with the project. All right. Uh, I truly, I personally don't have any questions. I, I've seen it. I don't need to go through it all again. Does anybody else have any concerns? Nope. I move for I move for a negative determination. I second that. Andrew, how do I vote to support that thing? Positive or negative? Aye. 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 I support that. Nor. Aye. Dave. Aye. All right, so you have to go ahead from the board or from the committee. Yeah, do you need anything from you? Yeah, I will issue a negative determination for for you guys. Um, you will need to sign it. So, should I ask you all to sign it in between now and yes, please, sir. Okay. Yes, so that they can get her done. Get yep. going. Yeah, so you just let us know when you have it in the office and then we can um, come in and sign it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Just I'll let you guys know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, all right. Oh, thank you. No, I didn't buy them this first. Yeah. It's not an easy. Okay. Yep. So just keep in mind anybody that speaks has to sign in or you really don't get recognized. Yeah. The law. Oh. The law. All right. 
So we're moving on. Next thing we have is another RDA for 21 White Street. It's the proposed replacement of the seawall within 100 feet of Lake Congamon. So the Southwick Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing under the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, uh, General Law 131.40 and the Southwick Conservation Commission Regulations and Bylaws Chapter 182 and Chapter 450 for request for determination. The project is located at 21 White Street. The project is for the replacement of a portion of a seawall within 100 feet of Congamon. Lake Congamon, the meeting will be held here and now. So who do we have? for the applicant for White Street. Oh, dear. Anybody? Anybody? Anybody online? There are people not, online. Not being muted. No one's saying anything. Okay. Maybe they will show up later. iPad 2. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's going to speed things up. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, in lieu of the fact that nobody is here, we're going to continue this. So, I'll make the motion to continue. Do I have a second? I'll second. Jerry seconded. Kevin? Aye. Norm? Aye. Well, Matt, Aye. Andy, Aye. all right, thank Could you. Forward the picture I sent to you to all members. No, okay. I mean, I can send it to you. Well, no, no, fine. Okay. okay. Fine. <laughs> would, you, I, would you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be great. I can do it tomorrow. Okay. Would you picture of the wall? That's all. Yeah, from the, actually, it's helpful from the, from the lake. He has a picture in his RDA and his, Right. You know, you only see a, a portion of it. All right. So we're moving on to new business. We're out of the public hearings for the day. A new business. So the first order is there is conservation property behind 108 Coast Hill Road and Doreen Garda Guard, uh, is here to present a cleanup plan. So, Doreen, if you could just come on up. We have a table, a chair for her. We want you to be. <laughs> so, A, we appreciate that you're looking to do some work up there uh, and alerting us that there's work that needs to be done up there. So, if you could just and if you listen to what you're thinking. So um, my, I kind of represent about eight people that board their horses at um, 108 um, Coast Hill Road. Mm -hmm. Now, the owner of the property has nothing to do with this um, in terms of the barn or the business is run by somebody else. Mm -hmm. So she's not involved. But um, so we take our horses out in the back and trail ride. And um, basically, we go behind the barn and there's a lot of wetlands up in that area. Um, and we kind of go north and then we end up crossing a brook. I don't know the name of the brook. Um, we then, I, I actually don't even know who owns that part of the land, um, but I know when we cross the brook, it is town land. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen a lot of no trespassing signs. We've seen, um, a trail cam, which we like Luke. <laughs> um, <laughs> we've seen um, notices of like no motorized vehicles, which is great for us because we ride horses. Yeah. Um, so basically, what has happened over the winter with our lovely winter, we've had a lot of trees fall right, right in the middle of the pass. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know who maintains these paths. We didn't even know. We kind of found them by accident. Um, when we crossed the brook. Um, so over a course of about a year and a half, um, we've trail ridden in there with no problems. Um, and usually we managed to get around things, but this last um, winter totally trashed, trashed the access. Um, we're talking trees as big as this table, yeah. some of them. Um, we just 
trail ride. We do it for fun. We do it for pleasure. Um, we also have access to the field. If you go up Coles, Coles Hill Road mm -hmm. on the right, we have access and permission to ride on the perimeter of that field, which we all do. Um, so we can enter either from the field or we can enter from behind the barn. Um, behind the barn, there really isn't any problem with trees down. Um, it is the part where we cross the brook. And um, again, it seems to be your your guys' property, the town. Um, all yeah, we really so that's how we have access to it, right uh, through here. Okay, yeah, okay. Right. So we have, I think it's like 25 feet. Yes, yeah, so right you guys actually here. have a, a trailer of stuff there, by the way. A what? Uh, a tractor trailer stuff, tractor trailer truck of stuff there. Woo! That doesn't belong to anybody. Let's go get yeah, it. That, that, <laughs> so I know this is. Um, I don't think it's that kind of stuff. He's a contract. I, I don't know what it is. I mean, there's a, well, there's actually an air time. conditioner in one. I need an air conditioner. And the stuff we don't want. <laughs> so this is the farm you write. Right, exactly. And that's the Barry property. So we go to so the farm. We go to your left. Oh, sorry. I'm just going to screen right. share so Zoomers can see. Um, wait, how can I share screen? Share just like that, just like that, and then they'll see whatever yeah. they see, right? Yes, they should. Okay. Right. So actually, no, we don't access from there because that's from Stair Drive. Yeah, you must. Go yeah, that. right. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So we access there, and I don't know exactly how Stair Drive hooks up. I I think we've ridden some trails up to stair drive and down the road but the part of that we're talking about is um i think it's beyond stair drive I, I so it. i guess my question is because you can't really see the trail yeah here. right exactly like you can see the delineation for the wetland right you can't see the trails here so i guess i don't even know if we know if what you're looking to do is on town property or whether or not it's on somebody else's property. No, it's definitely on town because it actually follows along the brook, and a part of it follows along the brook. Um, it actually is closer to that borderline on the right than you might think. Over here, yeah, so it's right here. Over, okay. Tuttle brook. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. Tuttle brook. Yeah. So, um, again, I don't even know who. We just found these by accident. So there's some kind of offshoot trails, and then you come to houses, which we don't go on their property. But um, basically, what we want to do is just we don't want to remove trees. We just want to cut up trees that have fallen. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that will involve a gator of some kind or four wheel vehicle to get in there. Um, and that's what I guess we're questioning if we can do that to just get those trees that may be in the way down and kind of well you got to question both right because you, you need permission to remove the trees or, anyways right even then, if they're already across even if they're like already like down yeah okay yeah i mean if you're moving doing any physical labor okay. on town property you really need to get permission from the town it's a liability thing that's exactly yeah. why we're here you know the second thing is didn't know who owned you that first right the second thing is, uh, and I'd have to take a look at it, there may be a conservation restriction on that property that states what can and can't be done. I haven't read it. I don't. What did I say? I wrote down something. I did a little research on the property. Yes, um, lounging, fishing, and reading. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> so the Conservation Commission had wanted this property for, what did I say? Lounging? Fishing and reading. Fishing, reading, and lounging. Oh, yeah. Lounging, lounging, lounging. reading. Um, yeah, you can lay about there's a lot of bugs lounging. out there. I don't think everyone, yeah, lounge out there and feeding, feeding the bugs. They, Maybe that's what it's supposed to be. Accepted say. the property for passive recreation and conservation purposes. Um, I don't believe there is a conservation restriction on this. Okay, so, so however, if I may, please, um, I would have that in writing. And given to them so that they're getting haggled and harassed by anybody for doing. Thank you. That would be awesome. They that would be awesome. That and say we are here. We actually got here. harassed by somebody on the trails. Yeah. We um yeah. we rode up and we we're just near the property and I thought the trail went to the left, so I was kind of walking over and a guy was pulling up out of his car and getting out of his car in his house 
And he comes over and starts yelling at me. He says, don't walk on my property. I'm like, he goes, I don't want foot footprints. I'm like, I don't kind of walk on your property, sir. I would, he gave me a load of crap. <laughs> and then what had happened was I had at one time, come about a year ago, come over to the town. I think it's a tax office upstairs. The assessor's office. Uh, assessor's office. And I said, you know, we were questioning about being on this property. Mm -hmm. Who owned it? We didn't want to, we don't want to make it wrong for us to ride there we don't have a lot of places to ride horses mm -hmm. um and so this is the one place we can so we wanted to make sure first of all who owned the property and number two if we could access it mm -hmm. um at that point there was no problem with trees down or anything the path was clear nobody seemed to mind mm -hmm. or the woman that said we talked to said it shouldn't be a problem um, the only problem arose is when winter came and right, right. we were going to take pictures, but we, we just can't get in there with the horses. You just want to clear debris off. Right, of basically. So the, the path is probably right. from right. here to the wall. Right. And mm -hmm. it's just that there's branches. Literally, the one time, the time that we went, we literally took horses through brambles and, and vines. And God bless these horses. Just to, like branches and trees and vines up to their chest just to get around mm -hmm. and it was like we can't do that and we we don't cause trouble you know what i'm saying we have to ride on the road a little bit but we're respectful of the cars and the cars are respectful mm -hmm. of us um but we just want to be able to continue riding there but we can't physically because of the um obstructions and all we want to do is just clear a path we don't like we don't want to take trees down we just want to get a path so we can just walk through so my recommendation would be two things one let us come out and see what you're looking to do okay all right uh and second i think we would want like a, a plan for what you're looking to do right something in writing that okay. says this is what we're looking to do that we can look at and have a record of so that somebody doesn't go in there with a chainsaw and just go yeah, right, yeah, and yeah. fell a forest, well, right? Speaking of this, now um when we discovered this these trails, somebody goes in there and, and cut stuff. Not not this time, but it has been which I thought it was the town. Mm -hmm. But until this time where the trees were down, somebody has gone through and you know, when we go off the trails, you can see actual cuts on the trees. But, so we should go for a walk together. So I don't know if somebody else is doing it, which I don't want to get anybody in trouble. You know, oh, it's too late now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Even, I'm like I'm talking vagueness here. I don't even know. It's, but it's with dirt bikes and snowmobiles are not shy to cut off trails. Well, there. that's the other um, thing too, because we all. have seen yeah. there are um, there are sometimes marks, uh, tire marks. Right. I mean, you can't you can't miss them because right. it is. It is a little bit wet back. There's so, a lot wet back there. Why, why don't we agree to, to, to come out and take okay. a look? Um, anybody else looking to go on a site visit out there? I, I, love 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 I haven't seen the property. Seen. In, I've only seen that little pathway. I haven't really walked too far back. Which the this easiest. Is, this is kind of intriguing to me right here. The easiest access. Is that the track? Is that there? a stop right there? Huh? Where's right. the track and trailer light? Like? I mean, so look at these right here. Yeah, those are it. Those are it. So it's on your property. It's not blocking the. Well, assuming the maps are right. Let's uh, okay. not go crazy with the maps around here. <laughs> right. Um, um, it's going to be easier to access through the field than getting through, unless you have motor, like a motorized vehicle, like a four wheel or something. Well, uh, we do, but we can't take them out there either. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Then it, probably the best access point would be through the field um like i said we have permission to yeah, ride fine. on it so we'll so, grass up to here and get take, your own horse yeah, leave. yeah. Are you okay. this field right here got one yes okay. yeah. so let's pick a day um to go out there who was interested who? can i get my camera mm -hmm. sure of course any day was saturday this week any day but saturday yeah Wow, yeah. I like that. We're on vacation and I didn't yeah. go anywhere. <laughs> Shame. Shame. <laughs> so then let's talk to you. Yeah, oh, right. Friday's the beginning of a long weekend. Thursday night's the beginning of a long weekend. Monday night. 
Um, Hi, Dave. Yeah. I mock that property all the time because I know the owner, Mark Barnard. Yeah. And he, he's made a bunch of trails. And what he was concerned about is that he doesn't want the horses to turn on the trail when it's wet because then they make big you know, marks. Same thing with the ATVs. He doesn't mind during the dry season, but he, he doesn't want them on the trail. Um, when you say own that property, yeah, he owns 25 acres. But not the conservation property. No, no. Right. But the yeah. trail that you're talking about. You that kind of goes out. Yeah, and you went yeah. up into his backyard. Oh, okay. Well, we didn't go on it. We didn't go on it. No, I know. We were still in the way. People with horses walk right in their backyard. No, we no. did not go on their property. No. Well, I guess. Is, is it marked right by us that says it's conservation property? We still I have think. little tags that we could. We still have those. We still yeah. have those. No. I don't know, but we'll bring no, some. I ordered them. Yeah. Yeah. Years ago, I ordered them. So oh, okay. yeah. if we still have some. But there were yeah, there's yeah. sales. But like I said, I didn't know. We have no idea. Those trails go all the way through. They also go behind the hillside road where the little train depot is. Yeah. Okay. So we mostly go along, like parallel to parallel. I guess the barn. Do you have time this week? Um, sure. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you can name some time. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. retired, so <laughs> I understand. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um what do you guys think? Like uh we could do Wednesday. <laughs> that Wednesday. Oh, that's right. We could do Thursday. Thursday morning. Yeah. Thursday morning. Thursday morning. Thursday morning. What time? Thursday morning. Say. Too early or too late? Eight thirty. Eight thirty work. Perfect. Where should we meet? Six in the morning. At the barn itself. Yeah. yeah. Is it so? It's that I'll barn right there. Right yeah, but <clears throat> again, to access. The field is going to be able to a, a little walk down the road. Can we drive we into the driveway to the barn? Can you? Yeah, there's yeah, also um right also there. in the field there's a little like an inlet. That's how we access it from like we go down uh, the barn driveway or we cut to the back. You don't want to go. You don't want to go. Over. I just want to know where we're parking. Right. Okay. That's it. Um, on Coast Hill Road. Okay. So if you're going down the hill from Hillside. Yeah. Just a little bit after the trees end on the left, there's a little inlet. Yeah, it's where the tractors yeah. go. Oh, She's talking about down here. No, we're down in that field. Yeah. Here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. No, um down, keep going to your left. Wait, where does the road turn? Oh, the turn. And then there's a little bit of here. And the the road, road turns to the right a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So go go to the, like where the there's a fourth tree there, little one. One, two, three, four. Here. Yeah. Just yes. There's your opening. There's an, oh. There's okay. There. There's a little opening. That's how we access the field. Okay. And then we go basically back. It's right here. Right here? Yeah. Yeah. We basically go on the perimeter to the right, and then along the base of the field, and as you turn the corner at the end of the field, that's the entrance to the woods, the wooded area. All right. So eight thirty. Okay. So where are we meeting? Right, right, right there. That, right right there. At Posa, sure. right I'm going to tell you. So let me tell you. I'm dead exactly. serious. That grass is really high and it's full of ticks. So, so get horses. They're privately <laughs> owned. So, I mean, we can ride. I can ride on a horse, but you're not going to want that. <laughs> you didn't hate that, right? They, they haven't hate that yet. No, that. no. They've only done across the street. I know. The ticks are really bad. The ticks are really, really bad. Don't spray yourselves. <laughs> I don't know who Where owns that place? field. If you can ask them, if you can drive in to, around the perimeter again. So I, I, I'm going to go back to: Do you ride out of that barn at the time? Yeah, yeah. So is there a reason we can't park in that barn? Oh no, but we're going to have to again walk to access that field. Mm. Um, we're going to have to walk down the road. Well, why can't we just go here or here? It's going it, to try. No, it's that's wetlands. Uh, can I come up? Yep. Can I do a pointer yeah. thing? Yeah, it's pretty soft. That's the one with the beaver down. Yeah, yeah. There's... So, all right, so here's like the farm, okay? This area here is gross with pickers and poison ivy and everything you want. We ride the horses through there, but they're okay. 
then we end up coming out right right around here and then we go down the road mm -hmm. and then we go to the opening okay down at the bottom right yeah. if you want to park at the barn that's fine but you're not going to want to walk through all that crap right, right. and if you walk on the part of the trail behind the barn it's going to be a very long walk and then you have to cross the brook okay so then we'll park down the bottom of the hill okay Right. right in there. So we'll be in yeah, there. Yeah, right in there. Can we go in or? Yeah, it's, it's we going after all. Okay. okay. So maybe we go in and drive up as far as we can and then. I mean, I don't. Get up the cross. Well, you're not going to drive. No, it's yeah, you don't want to drive. No. You know. Just pull park. in, park, and walk. Yeah. Okay. Right. So 8 30 on Thursday. 8 30 a.m. Excellent. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We have not been in there in a while. So I don't know the conditions. Um, Just to let you know. Um, but it is, it's really nasty. Okay. We All wear, right. We wear mosquito nets. Well, you know. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. It's daunting. All right. So, um, <laughs> we're going to go out of order. So under new business, there's open space committee. Yeah, but we, could, for a while. we could talk about that towards the end of the meeting. Let's get the stuff that's going on with the folks that are either here or on Zoom out of the way. And we could talk about that internally, okay? Um, obviously, you're welcome to hang around, but I want to get stuff done. So if you want to leave, you can leave. Okay, so under old business, there's a request for certificate of compliance, 194 Granville Road. Yep. What do we know? Um, did anybody go out and have a look? Not this week. Not this last week. week. You went out last week? Why it every day? <laughs> How did it look? Pretty good. Yeah. I was kind of wondering why the mats, like, is there a grade that the mats stop at? Is there, like, the mats are in, like, the grass? You know what I mean by the mats? The, um, I think I know what you mean. They're kind of down here, yeah. over there. I don't know. Why is it generally like on like a steeper slope, like something yeah. more than like a three to one slope? They right. use the road control matting and the flatter areas, they just probably didn't do it because yeah, the cost of buying it. I get it. Why? Yeah, it just seemed like the mass could have gone a little further around, but it seemed like it looked better. Right. I just yeah. wonder what the, where the cutoffs, there's got to be specific numbers somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So it looks like the grass is taken. The grass is taken. It looks grass pretty full. There are, there's no boulders there for monuments. Uh, Was that there, the order of conditions? There are, yeah, but there's a monument over here. Um, was that mm -hmm. another one here? And then there's this one right here. Um, and there's some rocks over in this area. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's filled in pretty well. I'm, I'm satisfied with it. Um, I did mention the Japanese knotweed. It's still there, but it's in the mowed area. Um, so that would be hopefully constantly mowed. Norm, do you have a question? No. Okay. No. So those folks that were there, you say you're satisfied? <clears throat> I yeah, I went out today and it was, okay. it was better than before. Sure. Nice. You're good too. Yeah. Well. Then Andrew, since you were the one who went out and did the uh, inspection, and we trust your judgment, would you like to make the motion? Make the motion to uh, grant them a certificate. Grant them a certificate of compliance. Then release their bond. Release their bond. And Momet seconds. Yep. Norm. Aye. Dave. Aye. Aye. Jerry. Jerry. Aye. Kevin. Aye. Excellent. All right. Keep moving. Request for a plan alter, uh, alteration, um, 157 Feeding Hills Road. So no one will be here tonight. They asked to be at the next meeting. Okay, so we will continue that. Is that creeps? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, possible wetland violation, 31 Sam West Road. Okay. Just... That is the Sam West Road was the one we talked about behind TJ Bark Mulch. Uh, there was some concern about who actually owns the property, and they were going to 
hire on a wetland scientist to come in and put together a replication plan. So we'll probably just have mm -hmm. to circle back around to them and give him a little coke because if I remember he was going off to Florida mm -hmm. and he left it in charge of his manager in charge. So we should probably make sure his manager in charge is managing. Okay. Mm -hmm. A uh, report of a pot of port -a potty and grills along the shoreline at 81 Point Grove Road. So Norm and Jerry made a trip out there. And what'd you find? Sabrina, do you have pictures? Uh, old pictures. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Um, here we go. When did, we about, did we talk about it? There we go. Is that a good photo yep, for you? Same. Let me just uh, share. I forgot to share in the last one. Okay. Norm and I went out Tuesday and there was no one there. He wasn't open, so we wanted to talk about it. But we looked at it and it does appear to be mounted on two, I don't know, pieces of timber, like four by fours, Norm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what we had in mind was asking him if he was willing to move it to the other side of that fence so that it couldn't be tipped over and you can see the lake is pretty cute yeah yeah if you know if that would be a big deal or well he wasn't there to talk to we're not even really sure who owns it and who to talk to so i was just going to go knock on the door oh um, we know that guy yeah frank uh Willow. Grillo. frank Sorry. Willow. yeah yeah you see the gentleman that runs the restaurant down below mm -hmm. He, I don't believe he, he runs that. Building. He owns the building, I believe. He runs the marina part of it. He's also that property up on Babs Road, the old, I don't know if it was a legion or something. Oh, yeah. There too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, but Frank Rillo and Sabrina, you can get Jerry contact. Mm -hmm. Just give him a call, right? And then, Norm, if you want to talk about the signage, you had an observation. Yeah, there's a requirement uh, in all Chapter 91 licenses that you've got to have two signs that state that uh, basically uh, that has your Chapter 91 license number on it and, mm -hmm. it, and it's open to the public. They have been removed. Okay. Oh, it was there before? Oh. The prior owner had. Okay. They were in very weird locations where you couldn't you couldn't read them unless you went. You know, unless you're looking. <laughs> unless you were looking for them, which I was. Can you add that as a talking point? Thank you. You both are on LMC, so you guys should be able to articulate that better than mm -hmm. me, anyways. At some sure. point, we'd like to get back over there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, if you guys just between now and next time we meet, we try to make that happen. Do you have a contact? Uh, I will send the contacts for a friend. Yep. Yeah, nice. He's, he's a reasonable gentleman. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Anything else on there? No. So, all right. Next thing up is 1012 Island Pond Road and the Congamon Heights Association, LPP dock placement discussion and possible shoreline alteration. Who do we have here on this one? Shoreline Sausage. Can they join us up here, Caroline? Looks like John Carini is also on. Mr. Carini, you're on mute. If you would uh, please come off mute. We'll, we'll get started until he comes off mute. So just for historical perspective, the last time we met, at our last meeting, I think it was uh, we as a commission had asked that you and Mr. Cranian get together, mm -hmm. uh, your attorneys, and iron this out and come up to a resolution and come back to us with what you folks had come up with, right? Correct. So uh, we got a pretty detailed email from Mr. Cranian stating that that hasn't happened, that nothing has come out of this. So um our attorney is uh was not available today um, as well so um we're proposing that he simply straighten the dock out so that it's not elbowed so it's more straight in line with the property line and i guess that's what that is 
So I was going to negotiate with him if he wanted to stay between council. So uh, after discussing it with the board, um, that's what I thought was very reasonable. So taking the tip of the dot, it anchors where it is and just turning it. The tip meaning the land side? No, the it's, water side. If the easiest way for me to understand it is the dock is going this way. If the dock goes straight out, I think that's a. We need a picture. Well, I have one. Yeah, I, I, I think the dock is straight today. The problem is the property line is diagonal. Well, six of one half dozen of another. Yes, yeah. you can look at it that way. So maybe I should uh, explain myself better for it to follow the property line. I think is a better way to say that. Okay. The extended property line. Yeah, the, the imaginary extended property. Right. Yes, yes. Do we want to have a sketch? I, I'm hoping I have a copy of the survey. We can just accept it, I guess. Mr. Cranium, while she's looking that for that information, do you want to weigh in? What is your thoughts on her proposal? Oh, we got something here. Sure. Can you can you hear me okay? Yeah. You, you can hear me? All right, yes. can we just hold off a second and let Mr. Cranian have his piece to say, please? Can you hear me? Can you hear us? Yes, there's a little delay, but um, I've uh, spoke with her counsel. Her counsel has not uh, gotten back to me as, the, as to any proposal. Uh, my proposal is the docks stay where they are. Uh, otherwise, I would like to know the commission, the uh, association's plans to come into compliance to have their two docks within 25 feet of the property line, property line, which would require removal of one dock at each of the beaches. Uh, that would be a resolution that I would be interested in pursuing. Otherwise, uh, my dock has already been shifted about five feet from when Mr. Salvini first did his his um, assessment. So as far as I'm concerned, the dock is in compliant. We've already voluntarily moved it over and I'm not agreeable to change any more positioning on the dock, anything to do with my property at all. If Ms. So, Gauthier. Yeah. Mr. Cran Mr. Craney, so here's, we're, we're talking two separate things right so we understand you have a formal complaint against them yep. right and then there is their request to have you move your dock right so one from my perspective they're two separate things now if you want to go forward with their your complaint if you're not satisfied with what they're doing that's fine but to me they're two separate issues so now you just said something that you've gone ahead and you've moved those docks. Do you know when that was, or moved that dock? Do you know when that was done? It was after the survey by Mr. Salvini. This year? Yeah. After the survey by Mr. Salvini this year, when Ms. Gauthier was present with Mr. Salvini, subsequent to that, the end of the dock, not the anchor point, but the end of the dock was rotated, shifted at least five feet towards our property. Done voluntarily, done in goodwill. The dock's not moving anymore. I wasn't even aware of movement of, of the dock. To tell you the truth, I wasn't even aware of it. Okay. So if the dock has been moved, are you satisfied? Yes. Okay. So then, and Norm, it sounds like you have something. It's, if it was moved five feet, it's still three feet on the extended property line of Parliament Heights. But technically that's not their property. Meaning it's not Congamon Heights Association property? 
out in the water, it's not. Oh, it's oh, the state. Oh, oh. That, what, that's what you mean by extended prop, right? Correct. Yeah. The pro property line does not extend into the water. I made a good faith movement, five feet, and there's no basis to say that that property line extends out into the water past the land. It's been moved, it's gonna stay there, and that's it. And if Ms. Gauthier would like to continue to pursue her complaint, she can still, please, she has the right to do that. I'd like to know if she would like to do that. And if not, then we can put this to bed right now. Well, obviously, what we asked for at the last meeting has not happened. What was that? Two parties would get together and come up with uh, a solution. Yes, sir. That has not happened. It has not happened. I sent a proposal to Ms. Gothier's attorney today. He has not responded. He was ill. I didn't get anything from the attorney. And because of my attorney schedule, I tried to reach out to Mr. Craney and myself and said, you know, maybe we can have negotiations because of the lag time in getting the negotiations mm -hmm. done. And he cared not to do that. He wanted to go through counsel. Well, I, you know, honestly, I, I would probably have done the same thing if you'd already engaged counsel. I think as an attorney, I would right. probably do the same thing. So I get that, you know. But I don't want you to think that some good faith effort was no, made I, and, on and I appreciate that. I, you know, just going around the table. What are your thoughts? Well, initially, I, the way I think is, it was two weeks since we met. So why did it come to today before everybody tried making contact the day of the meeting? Well, yeah, I, I, I guess. That's a point to be made. Um, if that's the case, then that's an, that's an observation. Have you, have you read this letter? As far as the extended okay, property you lines, deal though, deal with everything that's in this as letter. As far as the extended that's property right. lines, so the lake obviously is straight and popular. Right. Right. So the problem I can't is, say is hold on, one conversation at a time, please. Kevin, you were going. So the problem is, is if you try to extend a dock at a straight property line, if you have property lines like this, so, so if your property line goes like this, then essentially you own, you would get more of the lake versus a property line that goes like this. So I, that's why I, just, I don't think you can really request a dock to maintain a, a, a certain property or extend your property line into the lake. That's why they don't allow that. Right. So really that's kind of a moot point in my mind that we're trying to use this extended property line into the lake. I think I think that's why they want 25 feet, but that's already been previously allowed. Right. Now you can't say, well, now you have to spin it because, like I said, some people could get more of the lake, some people would end up with less or nothing of the lake. So, geometry. Yeah. Well, this is correct. General concept. So, mm -hmm. basically, you have an anchor point, one base. Yeah. That's where things start from. And now you're talking about just swinging it either this way or this way. I'll weigh in. I, I don't care when they came to an agreement. If they're coming to an agreement right now and we can move on to other things, I'm happy. Mm. You know, I, I will say this. Uh, I don't know how long I'm going to be on this board or committee or whatever we want to call it. I don't ever want to see this again. I don't ever want to have this conversation again because this is the third time I've sat through it and I don't know why it keeps coming up. But if Mr. Karanian has gone ahead and made that move and you're comfortable with it, then it should be done, right? If Saunders can guarantee to make sure that that thing is GPS located in that same spot year after year after year, I, I, I think shake hands and go on your way. Be happy neighbors. That's my opinion. That would be my opinion. I don't even think I, I, I don't know what I'm waiting. Am I waiting for everybody else? Well, to you, you know what? No, 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 no. I appreciate right? it. Quite honestly, I don't even know if this is something we vote on. I don't know. You know, I, I'm just going to go with um, like we've done in the past. We've given the Karenian family 
and the Congamon Heights Association latitude to not be in compliant with the placement of your doc and the placement of his docs, you know, I would say we just continue that forward uh, after he's made that correction uh, in perpetuity. And unless something dramatically changes, then I don't, I don't see why we ever have to have this conversation again. I agree. Agreed. We're, we're we disagree. Very, that's okay. We're very close to having an understanding, I think. And uh, if it's something that both parties can live with. Can I hear his opinion? Mm -hmm. I, I think, guess I'm done. I just think we're, we're relaxing the rules, yep. which we have responsibility to enforce. And we shouldn't. So which rules do you want to enforce? Do you want to make kind of on height to move their docs too? Or do we want to go to- You're the one that said they're two separate issues. I, I get it. But what I'm saying is, you know, we have historically set a precedent with this committee to allow the Karenian doc to be where it is. I wish I had brought my, my photos that I had, but I didn't realize that we were going to get into this detail tonight. But that doc has moved over the years. Can I get my pictures? I think they're... that's not true. It is absolutely true, John. It is not true. I've got photos. It's at the Google same Maps. spot. I have Google Maps. What might be different is the, the date of the maps. Doc that is doc, anchored in the same spot. That doc was further south at some point in time. 30 was years ago, maybe. Well, the last time we went through and agreed on it two years ago, it, it, based on the same pictures spot. we took, same spot. 2014, and, when Chief Riccardi had the letter, it was the same spot. 2020, it was the same spot. 2023, it's the same exact spot. And the, the chief, the harbor master, the commission has ruled on it twice already and found the exam sack spot is not a navigational hazard. Well, I, I will go on record as saying I had a conversation, uh, communication with the chief today, and if this is the agreement, he's comfortable with it from a navigational standpoint. No, it wasn't. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can like you want to answer. I'm like, oh god, no, 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 no. I just. I have to apologize. That I was not interrupting you. I don't want to take it as that. That was almost done. <laughs> Sorry. No, I was just when we were talking about compromise. Right. You know, and you know, you have a lot of folks in your organization and right. you speak for them. Do they feel like they want to take a chance on furthering this issue or just saying that this is going to be good enough? I think what we would like is we would be we would like to be neighbors where nobody's uncomfortable. I don't want the Karanians uncomfortable and I don't want us to be uncomfortable. And when we have a neighbor that needs us to move over a bit, we do a little bit more. We we always try to be a good neighbor and I, I, I'm willing to accept what is, however, I just think to straighten it out so that the, the whole eight feet at the end of the dock is not over this way would be a nice thing to do when I'm looking at genuine common courtesy. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay. I'm not looking for an act of Congress or move it all the way back over underneath the tree where it used to be. That's not what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. We're just looking for some common ground. That's all we really well, want. I think that question has been answered by Mr. Karanian. So the question is, are you willing to compromise to that level? And I know this this whole thing started with the situation, so right. I understand right. the work you put into it. But is there can we end? is there any type of a guarantee that when whoever is the employees that put the dock in that it's not going to get elbowed back that way more and more? I mean, you could put a pin in and have Mr. Saunders assure that it's in that same spot every year. You know, like GPS check. I, I don't know about any of these things. I'm just looking for some sense of continuity. Sure. 
to this whole situation. Well, I mean, this is a tight area and, you know, inches probably matter. So perhaps a pin where it could be located in the center of the anchor point would be a good place so you could start every year with that one spot. Would that be something? I think so, yes. Yeah. Okay. If we approve this, I don't, I think it will be back in front of us before you know it. I got a, I got a feeling it will be too, but at, at some point, you know, I, I think we've wasted enough people's time on this. They're adults. They should be able to figure this out themselves. I don't even understand why they're here, to be honest with you. You know, it, it, I agree with that. A, I agree with both. that. Well, I have so the issue is out in the water, which at the end of the dock where the dock ends in the middle of the water really is not our concern. My thing is, if you guys are willing to live with what you just agreed to, then, then why do we want to waste anybody else's time? I don't, certainly don't want to come back. Well, Matt and Andy haven't heard from either of you two. I really, there's too many opinions as it is uh, from these. Taking a neutral tone on this one. Well, I don't have anything to say. Mr. Terranian said he's moved at the end of the dock five feet over towards yeah. his direction. You heard that go by. You were asking for eight, he gave you five. Yeah. I, is, that, is that acceptable? Yes or no? Yeah, Move if on. it was truly moved five, yeah. All right. So my name's Ken. I'm, Hi, I'm Ken. the uh, vice president. Of what is your address, Ken? Five Grand Street. Okay, thanks. Right at the top of White Street. Mm -hmm. um, so how do we know that it's been moved five feet? And may I come up and look at that picture? I don't know which picture you're looking at when you're walking to approach here. The print of survey. Here. Yeah. Yeah. The survey. I have a copy of it in here. I'm just not getting my hands on it immediately, unfortunately. I just became part of the board. Right here. Is that fine? Here's. Two and a half feet. Okay. The red dot line is the extended property line. I don't see anything red. There's our beach. Okay. There's the property line. Okay. There's the dock coming this way. Um, Salvini so said this was eight feet into it was this line. Imagine. Okay. All right. Um, just the only thing that I'm thinking about is that the full pontoon boat being pretty much right in front of our whole beach. I mean, it's kind of concerning, but I, I'm not here to argue. I'm just, I just wanted to see this and speak my mind a little bit. Um, if you look at it, it doesn't look right. We've looked at it. Okay, oh, yeah, I, I understand. Um, were you happy? Would you, you didn't see anything that caught your eye? I, I felt very comfortable that you could navigate in and out of there safely. Okay. But it didn't look like any kind of encroachment to you at all? Uh, you, you want to talk? I mean, if we get into the encroachment <laughs> conversation, then... That's not our purview. Okay. Yeah, yeah, is it is it a hazard to navigation? Right. That's our concern. And the anchor point, fair enough. If the anchor... 25 feet from the property line, which is obviously they're a hardship because they can't do that, okay. right? But then is it a hazard to navigation? And you know, I rely on the harbor master's opinion more right. than I my own opinion, because he's the harbor master and he said it's not a hazard to navigation. Is... So at that point, I from I'm concerned, it should be settled. You two have come to an agreement. Fair enough. These yeah. are the things we look at. And the rest is kind of between you guys yeah. to, to hash something out and make it acceptable for both of you. But involving us any further, I mean, we've told you about the navigation and stuff, where the anchor point is. We've yeah. got a, you know, a, a compromise on Michigan Canadian's part. So uh, I don't know what else to tell you. Okay. I want this to go to bed so bad. I'm going to make the the uh, I'm going to make a motion to accept the agreement between Congamon Heights and the Cranian family for the placement of the dock in lieu of the movement over five feet to the south. Do I have a second? A second. Aye. Nay. No vote. Aye. That's it. It's settled. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cranian, thank you. Thank you. Moving on. 12 Hillside Road, request for restoration of a brook on APR property. Oh, my God. <laughs> it 
Good evening. Good evening. Can you introduce yourself and give us your address again? Sue Brasco, one Milky Lane. Hi, nice, Sue. So what's the latest and greatest on this? This is just a... Yeah, so we actually spoke today um, and she asked me what the update was. And as far as I remember, we're still waiting for the report from NDAR. That was the advice that was given to me um, through Mark Stinson at DAP. Okay. So, and, and I'm waiting for the report too. Yeah. Okay. So, so really there's, until we see that, I don't think there's a whole heck of a lot we can do at this point. I don't know how much is going to be in, in the report about the brook because I basically told her that no, I don't think we're going to do anything because it'll be through conservation and so I don't know she, what she can put in there. But I know she did contact Tyler Maycalf at MDAR, who's a stewardship planner, and she contacted him, the inspector that came out, Catherine Sullivan, and he actually contacted me and came out and walked the brook with me. Okay, and what was the conversation you had said? That yeah, it's it's crooked, and he um, said yeah, if you straightened it, the flow would be better, um, and basically that's it. He said you know what the conservation says. That was a while ago. Mm -hmm. Been yeah. a couple of months. Yeah. I do. What tell us? Hmm. Now the brook is. It's not great brook. It's. It's maybe what you can jump across. It's maybe yeah. three feet. Um, when it's dry in the summer, the areas that are deep has water in it, but it doesn't flow. Right. Um, and the only wide areas are when it comes through the Coburn on Coast Hill Road and in the middle of our property. Right. This is the one with the foundation that hasn't built yet. Is that on the hillside? No. Do I have it wrong? It's in the middle of a field. You can call call it up on your. Do we have the pictures of it? Probably the same map we were on before, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, close to that. Yeah, so it's it yeah, right across the street from the parking spot. Oh, oh yeah, we're walking yeah, through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're uh, walking through the other side of the street. Right, right. right. Where? Right here. Just, just go south. Where that sharp corner is, right there, mm -hmm. that bro. Never kind. So, have you ever oh, seen this thing? Yeah. yeah. In a in a heavy rainstorm. Have you? I have it now. All right, so you were right so on the up. This. Where are we going? Up north. It gets north. From there, north to the street. Much wider. Right there to the corner. Yeah. Wait. And, you know, when we had like uh, Hurricane Gale and whatnot, yeah. it looked like it was going to take this road out. It was that scary looking. All of this, but there are these little kinks and stuff. So it's agreeable. Like you said, like if it could be straightened out somewhat. It would improve the flow because every bump in here makes this thing widen. And where exactly right. are you looking to do the work that you're looking to do? Um, through the middle of the field, on the right and the left, there's yeah. areas there that it's the the worst. Are you talking about right up in here? Uh, no. Is it well, above the ten or below the ten? That's ten. That's ten. Is it number ten here? So it's that's just like a problem. That's like, like a parcel number. Oh, um, this is the road. Are we talking down this way, up that way? I'm talking closer to. There's a lane that goes through. I, what is that green line? That's just green. Are uh, the green lines or the wet it's ones? It's a wet line. Oh, yeah, those green lines. Okay, so <laughs> there's a road going down the middle of the field, and on either side. It's kind of twisty. You can see it there. Like yeah, this? that's bad. Yeah, there it is, okay. right there. Yeah. Yeah. You can see it's twisty. Yeah, that takes you up to this side, up in here. Are we going to do work right through here then? I think it's it's this big zaggy bit that needs to be straightened out more. Right. Because yeah. yeah. it doesn't flow, it just bounces out. And the whole thing is underwater. You can see it every time you cross further up the road. You look down, and it's like a floodplain. It is a floodplain. Flood the sides. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. You guys would be doing your own work. I don't even know if I'll do it, but if I do do it or have someone do it, I just want to have permission to do it. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. So it's not imminent. No, I mean, well, 
if I got permission and maybe next week I might say, oh, maybe I'll start just digging a straight line here with it right. or something, you know, mm -hmm. just, I just want to have the permission to do it when I feel like doing it, if I do it. That's going to take an excavator or something, right? A backhoe, maybe? Yeah. Um, it will. That's true. I have a, I have a little yeah. backhoe. Uh, what else was I going to say? And then it's a safety issue. Mm -hmm. So I noticed I, when it, you hate, you cut that first. Like you guys want yeah, I have to come with a brush cutter. Edge. I have to come with yeah. a brush cutter first to see where the brook is, right. and then I have to come with a sickle bar. Right. And then we have to clean everything out of the brook that all that grass falls in the brook, and we have to pull that all out. Um, so what are we expecting to hear from? Well, when I spoke with Mark, I tried to explain the situation, and he had said that it might not fall under an agriculture restriction this work. And that's why he wanted to see the report. Um, so that's... And that was the conversation that we had had when you originally came in. Does it fall under um, an agricultural exemption? And we weren't sure. And I, I guess that's what we're waiting to hear back from MDAR is, is it an agricultural exemption? So I, I don't know as though we can actually even agree to let you do it until we know if we're allowed to agree to let you do it. Mm -hmm. If it's an agricultural exemption, then we would say, fine, sure, go ahead and do it. But we don't even know if we have that authority at this point. At least I don't know we have that authority. So we need to find that out. Now, has anyone else in town ever done anything like this? Not to my recollection, and that's just mine. I don't, there's well, they, people who've lived in the town a lot longer than me. They probably just didn't come to. <laughs> well, we yeah. can't account for what people do that we don't know about, you know. And again, we're not trying to keep you from doing it, but we don't know if we have the authority to allow you to do it. So uh, I, I personally don't feel comfortable giving somebody permission without knowing I have the authority to do so. So I'm just going to say it's it's a waiting game until we hear back from the state. So Tyler Metcalf said that I can, if there's any obstructions in the brook, you know, like water going here and piece of land here, I can remove that. Mm -hmm. So I just want to let you know that if you do see me with a backhoe there, I'm, that's all I'm doing. If he said you could move obstructions, that's fine. We just don't give, change the flow of the brook. He didn't give me a right. The okay. thing is, you're not changing the flow of the brook. It's still going south yeah. just keeping it nice mm -hmm. and maintaining it yeah do we know the name of the brook it's terrible it is yeah, over over runs quite a long way actually starts at the gum property doesn't it the old gum property now it's something else i don't know where it starts yeah, it's, know where it ends. Is, it's on the couple maps you, you can't miss it i've seen it on the maps yeah it runs behind metal lane too and, and it somewhat goes all the way down puddles and yeah what, what regroups yeah what, what you said about it yeah. run by the road there yeah. it's just a long it's, it's almost the whole stretch of it but this is where it really comes to life and then you have the beaver down on the other side i'm sure that um, contributes to it yeah but yeah I've, I've seen this thing in after rainstorms and it's holy cow yeah uh, we have runoff coming from up on yeah. hillside sure. you see that you can see the blue through the trees there yeah. mm -hmm. that joins up to it well, let us just take another run back through DEP and give them a little kick, see if we can get this resolved. And as soon as we hear back from them, we'll proactively reach out to you and let you know what they say. And if we have to have another hearing on it, we'll do so. If it's exempt, then there's really no point in having the hearing. So why don't we just see what we can get back? Now, NCRS, is that correct? Is that how you, are those the initials? Or NRCS? Are they involved in this? Because Tyler was going to have someone from them come out, but the um, person who from Lentz is really busy and wasn't able to come out. Now, who's got the authority? MDAR, them, you, who's? Well, I know when I spoke to Mark Stinson, he said that sometimes MDAR doesn't quite understand the agricultural exemption, which is why he wanted to see the report to see what the report said. Um, and really, Mark Stinson's with he's with DEP. DEP. Right. Yeah. So, so who does I think DEP will ultimately give us guidance on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Right. They're usually who we turn to. If we don't know what we're doing. Okay. 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 All thank right. You. Yeah. Thank you. Is this the best time of year for you to be tackling this? Just out of curiosity. I'm... Oh, I may not even do it. I just want to have permission. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. If you had to, you would. Yeah. Yeah. I may never to. ever do it. All right. Oh. Okay. Thank Excellent. You. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Going back up. Open space committee. So we've had multiple meetings, multiple conversations about forming an open space committee as a subcommittee, an advisory committee to conservation. And it kind of brings me back to the conversation that we had not too long ago with Doreen Gard regarding the Concom property up off of Coast Hill Road, right? So I think from a conservation standpoint, we're busy with the day-to-day -day, uh, compliance application, the LPP stuff that comes before us that trying to manage all these properties becomes a little cumbersome as well. The intent of putting together the open space uh, committee that Sabrina and I have talked about is trying to put people in place that can be responsible for a, a couple of things. One, managing the properties that we have, coming forward with plans on how to do uh, forest cutting plans, um, forest maintenance plans, what have you, right? Have them be responsible for that. Have them be responsible for any grant writing for any projects that we want to have done on those properties. Have them start looking at priority properties for the town should those we look to acquire more property down the road. Let them go through the assessment of what are the priority properties that we should be looking Which at. They right? used to do when they were in existence. When they were in existence, yeah. exactly. So our goal is to kind of recreate that committee, right? But what we need to do is we need to at least hear vote that we want to reestablish that. And once we vote to re that we want to reestablish that, then we can start putting together like a charter, how many people are going to be on it. These things can be looked at in future meetings, but I, I at least want to be able to go back to the town and say, hey, we voted, we want to move forward with it. You know, uh, what are the next steps? So I'm open to pros and cons. If anybody doesn't think it's a good idea, that's fine. Uh, but I'd like to walk out of here with a vote, at least in my pocket, so that I can start. You need a motion? Uh, yeah. Question like Go a ahead. Motion. Jerry's got a question uh, first. Just, would this be considered a subcommittee of ComCom or a would, separate entity they are. of town? Would it would be a subcommittee of ComCom. Okay. They would yeah. report to us. We would pick the members. Okay. They would like, report. I know we talked about board. it. I just want to. It's like think of it as like the late committee come and give us a report. Yeah. It would be the same open space, but also make a and give us a report. Yeah. So they're an advisory committee. Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah. And, you know, structurally, I don't think anything's going to change. Their operations is not going to change. Style wise, it's not going to change. It's just being reinstated. Okay. And think about it that way. And, like and then, yeah, and that would be something. You could figure out, yeah. the, you know, the duties yeah. and responsibilities and how it takes some of the burden off of us because now we're everything. Sure. And they would be in charge of all of the open space issues, right. potential and existing. The right of first refusal on certain properties and things like yeah. that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good thing. It really is. Okay. So it's just a subcommittee for open space That's properties. It. That's it. One right. subcommittee. That's, That's it. it. Yeah. Yep. And we, we sort of talked about this and agreed on it at one point. Yeah. I know. I just wanted to want to. We even looked at it. Like, what yeah. it look like? Right. Orig originally, when it was when you originally had the subcommittee, you looked at you. You're talking about that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's how I started. I was on the open space, and then I got on it. Did we have interested okay. parties too? Yeah. There are, and, and so I, I'll get in. Sabrina has a list of people that are <laughs> interested in being on the committee. There are also uh, right now five people who have put in their name for the spot vacated by Brian Drennan. Mm -hmm. So the goal is whoever does not get that position might be transitioned over into the open space committee mm -hmm. to at least get their foot in the door with working with us. Uh, so I don't think staffing it's going to be an issue. I think we're going to have to at some point, how many people do we want on it? I think last time it was a nine man committee. You know, we can ask around, was that a good number? Is it a bad number? Do we want seven? Do we want 11? Okay. That is up to Probably us. Seven mostly. Yeah. You know, people coming and going and not being able to perform the duties. 
No, it was a consistent yeah. seven almost all the meter go. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's what we're hoping to do. So Mamet, you want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to reinstate the open space. I'll second. Kevin seconds. Aye. Jerry? Norm. Aye. Andy. Aye. Dave. Aye. Excellent. So there's one other thing that wasn't on the agenda that I added to the agenda. Oh. And yes, I did. <laughs> Ad hoc. Um, <laughs> can you just give us an update or a recap of the meeting that happened on Friday with Suffield and the uh, LPP with Suffield's attorney? Yeah. So um, ultimately what happened was the attorney said that they were going to do... Uh, well, let's give background why the meeting happened, just in case. So um, I guess th the meeting happened because I guess when we send out letters to Suffield residents, Suffield doesn't feel too happy about it. Mm -hmm. And they kind of feel like the threat, uh, they're threatening them. So... Um, to sort of mediate this, uh, the attorney had suggested that they have a, a, a point person where they, so we would contact the point person and they would contact the, the residents of Suffield. So that's where we left off. That point person would, would handle all violations. Mm. This was my, what I recall. Maybe I didn't get that feeling. For just the violations, what I thought it was just a point person for like everything for communi com communicating. Yeah, because we were supposed to educate that point person on what the LPP is, um, the forms, uh, how to fill out a form, <laughs> and how to get the residents basically to to send the forms to us. So I understand there's three current Suffield residents on the LMC. Four or five. Well, there's five Connecticut. Oh, okay. On, they're not all from Suffield, though. Okay. Okay. Um, four of them are. Yeah. And the fifth one has a has a summer home on South Barn, but he lives in right. East Hartford or something like that. Okay. So yeah, we have definitely have representation. Okay, good. I wasn't sure if that was the case. Yeah. I asked a bunch of people and nobody was clear, so I'm happy to hear that there was a woman. After the meeting on Friday, uh, Saturday night, came up to us and asked us about that. She was a, a late resident from Suffield. She yeah. wasn't aware that there was even yeah. beyond. So, okay. Okay. So um, we offered to, because there was a lot of new members on the select board in Suffield, we offered to put together a presentation that somebody could present to the select board in Suffield. He's going to bring that back to the, the what is the number one uh, select person? Colin okay. Moll, who runs the town. Colin Moll. Yes. Oh, the chair? Yeah. Okay. And we did say we tried to, if we could further simplify the, the uh, filling out the report, but it's pretty simple today. But, uh, but we'll look at that as well. Okay. And we'd still have involvement, Norm, with uh, going around and checking things, or would this be part of their purview? Uh, they police themselves, or do we? Well, after we did have that discussion after the, the Zoom call ended, because I asked the question, "Am I going to go take pictures of mm -hmm. the docks in, mm -hmm. in right in Connecticut?" Mm -hmm. and the chief recommends that if we do that, that it's gone on the police boat okay. with a police officer in the boat okay. with me yeah. or whoever takes the pictures. I, I would further recommend that why not have one of the LMC members that is from Suffield join you, That's right? Yeah, yeah, just so that they can have somebody that's yeah. on their side of the lake uh, be a part of it. Because if as you thought they're going to police their own, well, then let their policemen be a part of the inspection tour, right? So that they can 
firsthand say, yeah, we went by and here's what we observed. Yeah. So that would be my recommendation. Okay, um, that's it. We do have yeah, I'm 21 right Street. Right up in, uh, up in West, West oh. oh, okay. So one. let's go back in Wood Street. Yeah. Okay. Can you reach behind you, Andy, and grab me that folder? Yeah. All right. So we had continued this. So now I'm going to reopen it. The Southwark Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing under the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act 131.40 and the Southwark Conservation Commission Regulation Bylaws. Chapter 182 and 450 for a request for information. The project location is 21 White Street. The project is for the replacement of a portion of the seawall with Peter Congleman, Lake Congleman. Uh, who do we have for the applicant? Ron Ludor, 21 White Street. How are you? Good. Okay, why don't you tell us what you got going on? Uh, that's all uh, the winter of uh, 19 of 21, just score up the it's a crib wall and for it, I don't know if you know what a crib wall is it's actually two walls separated filled with stone and they're connected uh it's probably the, prop, the best wall you can make out of wood and that will hold and it did it, it held for about 40 years uh we get a tremendous uh, amount of ice pressure there and uh the wakes are from boats are Anywhere between two and a half, three, you know, three feet. They pound on that all day long, which is part of living on a lake. That's all. Uh, and I was going to do this earlier, but I was in the process of suing condom on lakes for the property. They told me I had the property when I first bought it, and they didn't. didn't. Then they told me I did. I finally got a lawyer and fixed it all up, and here I am. It just destroyed the front part of the crib wall, the ice, and the and the timbers, they were old. So it just destroyed them. So luckily I have a friend with a uh, excavator. He came out and we took out all the stone and everything and we just used the back half of it, um, you know, of the wall, up in, but that's getting hammered now. So I did my homework. Uh, I was up to uh, the Finger Lakes Is there, and there's a company up there that just does uh, waterfront properties for all New York. Their, their stone core. <clears throat> and I talked to the guy and I sent him pictures of my property and, and he said, the best thing, cause it's a small, narrow property. It's only 18 feet. So you can't get an excavator in there. I wouldn't want it in there in this because God knows what's, what's underneath there. Uh, so he, did, he recommended blocks, solid uh, concrete, concrete blocks. Uh, they would be put on a pressure treated uh, six by six by eight. But I, when I called them, said it said it'd be better to put it on uh, on four uh, six by six by twelves. This would this would keep the thing from sinking one end and the other end. It all be, you know you know even. Mm -hmm. No digging, no nothing. Just put just put everything out out there. Put your uh, put your blocks on it. Nature will take care of itself. Lower it down, it will always be level. End of story. I, I, I guess from a structural standpoint, I don't understand how, how that works. Is it going to be a prefabricated? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll prefabricate it. I called up Arrow Concrete, and uh, th they said that they work a lot with, with uh, stone core, and they would get the dimensions of, of the blocks. They're eight feet. And they weigh fifteen hundred pounds, and that's all it would be is this place right in front of my own. They said that the more you get into virgin ground, the heart you're going to have problems because the ice will actually get under stuff like mm. all these, you know, twelve by eighteens or whatever people use. And I see it all because I kayak all around the lake. They're all lifting, and the stones are coming out from underneath. This will go for a ride. This is like a dock, right? Uh, that looks like a dock to me. It is a dock. They look the seawall in. The, the seawall is right. Oh, the the, 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 the seawall is right in front of it. Jump. Here's a picture of seawall is right, right there. In this picture, 
shows it good here. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, yeah. This is the seawall here, yeah. and he's talking about putting the blocks here. Oh, okay. So this butts up again. So yeah, that'll be it. Here. here, that'll be butting up there. Okay. This section yeah. here, you're going to replace. No, I'm not going to replace it. You said leave it. Take off the top one. No. And you said that will stay forever. The more you disturb the backside of it, the more you're going to have problems with ice pushing it. But he's just going to place these in front. Place of them right in front. And is he's there going to be any wood replacement at all? Just the uh, timbers that, that you would put underneath. Not and, pressure treated. Yeah, yeah, they'd be pressure, but yeah, they'd be pressure treated. And they're just going to sit there forever. And because once they get down in the ground, but he says, if you try to level them by yourself, it's not going to work. So just, just the nature take care and they will, and, and they will all settle in. There is a limit. From what I remember, that there's can't really use pressure treated lumber on, in the water, in the no. water, yeah, or near the water, or oh, or, I could I could put regular ones in there. I, I mean, they probably they'd be fine because they'd be you know they'd be underwater. And yeah, it can't and, be a chemically treated wood. Basically. Yeah. Okay. No, I never knew that because that's all chemically treated wood. It's been there. I don't know for how many yeah. years now. Over forty years. Why is this an RDA and not an NOI? <laughs> And it's a, well, it's a replacement. And that's it. I mean, they would point. they would lower right. it from the you know from the road, so there'd be no excavating, no digging. The only thing, uh, it's going to come in here with a boom and then yeah, just lower them, right? Lower them, lower them. That's it. Do they lock in to each Three other? No, 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 no. They recommended not and not okay. doing that. No, uh, and uh, if you get the science of it, it's it's pretty uh, pretty thorough uh, what, what this company does. And, uh, I was glad that I had just to uh, to run into them. So, Mr. Ludor, I, I I think I would want to see the actual product. What they're talking oh, about. Oh, I, I had a book. I I didn't bring it. It's it's a it's a concrete. No, I get what you're saying. And it's got some, a face on it if you want it, or you could do a little edging or whatever, and make them fancy. And then the, uh, the first eight inches off the water, and then it, and they put a slope in it so, so you could plant grass there. But so here, I guess here's my concern, right? Is everything needs to be on the record, right? Mm -hmm. And right now you're telling us what you're going to do, but we can't hold you accountable to what you're saying. We can only hold, if you give us what you're looking to do, then we can hold you accountable. This is what you showed us you were putting in there, right? So I personally, I don't think what you're talking about is overly complicated, but I would want to see the physical. We have to come back to another meeting or you're, you're, I want to get the stuff going before the, the uh, folks tear it up. So. Well, I, this, this is, what I'm asking for, you know, but again, there's well, I wouldn't put up record. anything that's it's going to make it look bad or destroy it. I mean, and well, it's not even looks bad. Yeah. You know, usually what we do when we have people come in here is they have to come with a in with a full plan, which you have a plan, but we'd be looking for elevations, and we would want to be which okay, you have that here, but we would want to actually see the product that you're putting in. No, oh, just, and, just uh, the brick, I mean, just the uh, block itself. Uh, I personally am not comfortable without seeing it. Whether the rest of the committee is comfortable without seeing it, that's up to them. I'm, is there I anyone mean, else on the lake that's used it? Nobody, you know, so we're happy to see that. Uh -huh. well, once, because I can understand now what's going on, and, and which a lot of people do, and a lot of guys will think they know how to how to do it because, like I say, I kayak all over, and I could see what they're saying. The flakes go on a, like this, you know, they go on like a incline, and you get ice pushing that yeah. anything, and anything that that has three say more than three quarters of an inch. I don't know, I use technical stuff, but get the ice so instead of going up and over it will grab onto it. Of course, the more pressure you got in okay. the single blocks, it lifts them up and you're filled with stones. What happened with the stones? You get the volcanic effect. And they, they come out it pushes and, then and pull. next thing you know, it's all destroyed. Yep. Even when you have the larger ones, uh, 
anything he says, you're filled with stones that has a, a high wake, um, high wake area or has ice, it's going to end up lifting. And you got a mess and then you got to start all over again. Yeah. So I, I, like I said, I, I will uh, get you a picture of that. I yeah, forgot. Normally, like the products like that, they'll have like a shop drawing. Pardon? Like, like a shop drawing of the product. The, the product, the blocks you're talking about, yeah. you want to put in there. Like reversal lock walls, like the smaller blocks, like they physically like will show you dimension size, like the actual blocks. Like I, I'm, I thought you were talking about the ones that Arrow Concrete makes that like. Well, they, well, that, they, yeah, they do make. They, they have made some. Labars have them on on their house. Okay, but those, 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 those are talking, but that's what I'm envisioning. You're not showing yeah. us the what like yeah. what we're trying to tell you is you, you need to physically we need to see a drawing of what product you want to use. What it's made. You're of. calling us yeah. this, but yeah. we don't Things see like it. That. You know. And, and how can we tell you you've, you've done it right or you've done it wrong we don't know if we don't know yet. what you're talking about, other than a verbal description? And you know, nothing against you or your integrity, but you know, this is a document. This is going to sit in the records for a long time, and no one's going to remember this conversation, but they're going to remember what's in the file. Yeah. Okay. So I got I got to get you a picture of it. Yeah, material. Pictures. Fact. So would it, would it be easy, I mean, would it be easier if we just Obviously, it's going to be a, a return. Yeah, correct. I would imagine. So, um, can you bring the guy that's going to do the work with no, you? No, I can't. No, then all of it. He's in all of it. Can you zoom in? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Ask him. I would ask him. Uh, ask that's him. usually that's what people the do. Wall itself. Yeah. So the timbers get laid on the ground. The blocks get put on right. the timbers. Right. What controls the elevation over time? It it, it doesn't rise. They all sink. Right. So I, I asked the same question. At what point do they sink below the surface? Well, what happens is he says, like like anything else, he says there is there is a point. Who knows why it's there, but they will stop, and that will be it. Mm -hmm. He says, and if you again, he's never he stressed so much the the getting into virgin ground. He said that is the most stupidest thing he sees as contractors do. Then they fill it with stone. Uh, unless they unless they could pack it like a sewer pipe, which they can't, it's it's going to fit the weakest point. And ice pressure, we get it bad there. I mean, at the beginning of the road, we've had ice come all the way up to the road. So, mm -hmm. yeah. The, what was the name of the manufacturer? Stone Core. Stone Core. I'm pretty sure it's Stone Core. I know Stones of the Fro. Trying to think of it. Yeah. Like somebody mentioned, you know, you're putting wood into the water, actually. Well, I mean, wood's always in the water, but if you pull it out, they it's can't always... Have, they can't it, have chemicals. Right? It's, oh, no. I, I, if you told me I'd do it, I wouldn't do it. You know, but if it's, I mean, I've been... I've seen that, and I don't know. How does I, it stay viable over the years? If it Does it dis disintegrate over no, time? No, it stays. I, the, ones that, the, the ones that we took out that were the base of that... You drill the hole down through them, yeah. and you think like you just put it in. Huh. After how much time? Forty years. No kidding. As long as long as it doesn't get air. No kidding. Yeah. As long as it doesn't get air in there, he said you'll be fine. That's interesting. Yeah. He said, but that's the worst thing to do is to pull them out because now you're weakening oh, up everything. Sure. And now it pushes. Can't so I I had an education. Uh, the guy was really really nice, old an old timer, but. They, they do it. For, it kind of seems to go against logic, but I, I'll I'll buy it. Yeah. Well, look at look at like ship records. Yeah. And, the you know, or whatever. Well, no, or even when they pull out, yeah. even when they pull out wood out of the swamps itself yeah. for doors and stuff, it's underwater as long as there's nothing oxygen gets to it and chemicals. Oh, underwater, well. it's it's fine. So again, I, I would recommend two things. One, come back with whatever literature that you can have. Okay. All right. And I would strongly recommend that you ask the person that's doing the work for you to jump in the meeting on Zoom. Okay. If he has any questions about how to access that, you can reach out to Sabrina. She can walk him through how to do that. But it would be great to have him here. It's his product. Let him speak for you. You're yeah. paying him. Oh, I could probably get someone from Arrow Concrete to come down. But uh, I don't know if this guy will or not. Right. But okay. he but he does uh he does Lake Lake Erie, he does all of them. Um uh, walls. 
So we're we're going to have this continued um, to our next meeting, which we already had continued to the next meeting. So we're just recontinuing it to the next meeting, uh, which is right now scheduled for July 17th. We're off for the 4th of July. Okay. It's only going to be an RDA. This won't be a, a NOI that you're questioning. I, I do have questions on that, but right now it's an RDA, so, you know. Um, yeah, because the issue with an RDA, you can't do an order of conditions, right? You don't typically take a bond on an RDA. Right. So, so I mean, if you feel more comfortable with it being an NOI, that's where you would vote for a positive determination. Right. I mean, this is kind of unprecedented. It's it's kind of like, you know, it's, yeah. there, there's no other one on the lake we can refer to that have done it. So you can look at all the ones that have done wrong. You'd be the pioneer. Right. <laughs> well, that's why I you said the guy. Because where I live, we get it. I don't know why we get it, but it does happen. And I, I uh, it, it's just amazing to talk to somebody who actually knows what you're doing. So how about, how about when they drive sheets? You don't think that sheets aren't better than than the he, he he doesn't recommend them. They use them on the ocean. Yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, he but his they're all over the lake too. Yeah, he, yeah. those we have a precedent for. Yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, but if he didn't do them, I wouldn't recommend them. Probably. He uh, he was showing me this picture. That's amazing. He did it on Lake Harry. The so the. The bigger the you know the lake or the what if they have to pour concrete, the base is huge, and it can, and it comes up to a point, and uh, they could they could run it. The machinery he's got is incredible. They could run this uh, you know uh, what do you say three hundred feet at a time, and then when they walk the forms and stuff, yeah, it was, yeah. It's, it's really a funny like a form. foundation, right? It's really a funny form. It's it, they don't clean the water out. They drop it down into it, and they and they set it. Now these things weigh. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know how many tons. But there, I'm like, he showed me one that they did on a Connecticut shore. It you sounds know, like old technology. It right? is. You it, know, it, if you look at the ice houses, right? Yeah. I was telling this to Sabrina. Yeah. You can see how and you know how they did that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they go up. You know, it's, it's amazing to talk to somebody who well, but, years. Yeah. So, so we'll, I'll get them the spectrum. But let, before you go off, let's talk about things procedurally, right? right. So and, and I'm gonna throw this out to the group too, you know, because as I just said, with uh, an RDA, we're not doing a uh, order of conditions and we're not doing a bond, right? Correct. So we're either going to approve or disapprove the project at the next meeting. So what are your thoughts? Do you think this needs to become a notice of intent? Would you expect to collect a bond and to have an order of conditions for this project? And if so, then we need to vote the project down as an RDA and the applicant has to come back in with a notice of intent. That's the right thing to do right now. Yeah, and that's we're setting a, a, a not a good precedent moving forward, right? Because exactly everybody right. can say that their walls are falling down. Yeah. And Even though prepared. it's been done 150 but years ago. Everybody, everybody else has to do those. That's why I asked the question before because I don't no, know. No, I, I, I get it. On the next meeting, yeah. and say, have, have everything in front of us. And, be like, right. and then I'll be, oh, by the way, now you have to do an NOI, not a, an RDA. Yeah. Right. So then I'll make a motion. Let me just ask one question. So we've never approved a retain wall replacement on an RDA that, that anyone can recall. Pretty much no. Yeah, I, I, that I've been, I've worn on there. I, I don't hear it, but I can't. I, I they they piled those sheet. They drove those sheets on North Pond. Right. Those are probably. And what was there? No eyes. What was? Yeah. No, no, those are on well, there more than I'm not sure, but okay. and that was an NOI. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, do you mean steel plates or? Yeah, oh, no, they rushed. That's what he said. Corrugated. Yeah, yeah they rushed. Like, yeah, they, they got into the right. Like, concrete yeah. will last forever. So, so I agree. I think it was like, yeah, it was so, so we are we're planning is this is a, to make a motion to do a positive determination. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to make a positive determination on the REA. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Andy? 
Aye. Norm. Aye. Dave. Aye. Aye. So what that means is there's a different filing that you have to do with our. Oh, board. I have trouble doing this. I apologize if you had trouble doing well, it. It's going to delay you. But, uh, ask Sabrina. She'll throw me out of here. But <laughs> what's going to have to happen is if you don't file it properly, it would delay it longer, right? And what has to happen is a notice of intent comes with two things that an RDA doesn't. One is an order of conditions. It's a legal document that says you have to do this and you're bound to do this, right? Yeah, well, and we want to make sure that we have that. The other one is a bond. Right to make sure that the job is done properly, and if there's any damage to the area around it, that you, the bond would be used to replicate what was disturbed. We do that on all late projects. Mm -hmm. It has to be done for yours. It's done for your neighbors, right? So that's just the procedure. So I apologize you're here for this, but we need the notice of intent because you are doing the work. So get together with the conservation office. You can do it tomorrow if you want. File for the notice of intent. We'll make sure you're on the agenda for the next meeting. Um, now, which is the box? Okay. So, well, it just all depends on it. how quickly he can file the notice of intent. Yeah, the bond is going to be dependent upon what we see your plan come in with the product and what the um your installer says the work how it's going to impact i can tell you the bond has typically been ten thousand dollars i can't plus. afford that i'm the nice guy to do this everybody fixes them and i never don't say every, anything. every single name every person in life has to do ten thousand dollars and you don't have to pay the ten thousand right. dollars there's there's independent insurance i think so I, I had to do it for my own property i had to my insurance company post the bond you, it's like cost me, I think, about $150 a, a year for it's a 12-month bond. bond. It's, it's an insurance. I had to do the same thing for myself when I built my house. So it doesn't, mm -hmm. you're not paying $10,000 out of pocket. It costs more like than bail. Yeah, it's like exactly. posting bail. Paying bail bondsmen. Yeah. That's so I call use. my insurance agents and tell them. That's who I use. Yeah, but do we have, have we ever come up with like a, I know this was talked about in the discussion, like on like a guidance. It's got to be through Michelle because, I, like, I don't know anything about okay. it, and she knows all the stuff on bonding. Okay, that's why I contacted my insurance agent, and he took care of it for me. Can you walk him through the process? So for NOIs, it's a bit more complicated, and I know that I've suggested or yeah, suggested people who have NOIs to hire someone because it is more complicated. I've never done an NOI myself. And what he needs to do through absolutely, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, so. yeah, and like a checklist and everything, and I can give him the list of mm -hmm. professionals. Yeah. Um, but as far as like filling out the paperwork, I know. We sat down together and, and everything. I, I I don't think I can do that. Um, so. Just as an example, there's a, there are people that put up walls, retaining walls, <laughs> and they've had to have engineers draw all the plans, get an NOI, mm -hmm. get you know the DEP to be able to do it. Yeah. And it can be complicated, but once it's done, and you being the first guy to do it, this is. Mm -hmm. You'll be the president, you know. Yeah, you'll, right. be, you'll be the guy. You know, all your neighbors. Still give me the fingers. I go by. So well, well, uh, I, I think that. part of the yeah. issue is you, the fact that you told us no one's ever done that here either. No, doesn't make it any. Doesn't help your case. The closest one is up in Otis. They did a a big yeah. one, some big mansion up there. I forgot the name of it. And the last time they probably just did it was in the ice houses in the 1800s. Yeah. And they just yeah. did it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And there probably wasn't a conservation. Well, uh, probably not. You know, there I was, promise you there was a virtual ice house. Sorry, sorry, you have to go through this. Yeah. Yeah. It's done. Jeez. I apologize. But We're not yeah, asking yeah, you to do anything. I want to see you have to come wait two weeks and then us say oh by the way you have to do this and then you're gonna be more right. frustrated that's what we're we'll be ahead of the game this yeah. way then now you have time to start the application that's for true. our next meeting because then you'd be another two weeks behind it sounds like it's, it's gonna not go fun i know but so, yeah. yeah once they come i mean my buddy's gonna do it with you know with the excavator and teddy teddy faulkner 
each would have placed them in, and that'll be it. And I'm just going to uh, top soil and, and get some turf put it on it. And that'll be the end of it. For an NOI, is, it, is an engineer required? Or is it, no, we've had really. people come in with their own you plans. Do, you can do your own plans. Yeah. 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 But she already has the plans, really. Yeah. I mean, it's just... Some people just that, do that. We just need to see the product. Yeah, that's all yeah. I want. Yeah, that's the product, product, really. Yeah. It is interesting. Yeah, if you stop and think about it, I thought it was all, yeah, right there. Because they all use stones. No. Yeah. I've seen a lot of stones. Well, yeah. now, yeah. Since, right. my, since my crib wall got lifted, and we had... Peel out. I don't know how many tons of stone. Yeah. There's a lot of stone. So everybody on White Street probably has this issue, or just on your end of it. Uh, I'm I'm kind of like <clears throat> I'm kind of like uh, if you look from White Street all the way down the end, yeah. you see where the stuff you like comes out, and then there's that you know the island, what they want to call it, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Well, I'm just before that. The red I house know. before the red house, the one that they're working on. No, I'm on White Street side. All right, we got to close up here. Yeah, I'm sorry. But, but I mean, uh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. but I mean, it just gets uh, gets yeah, very, yeah, that's yeah. how very, and the ice comes up. But I was telling Sabrina about, about maybe 15 years ago, we had a sish or a sash there, where in early spring the water got hot on one side and cold on the other side, and it started up under the ice. To push the ice. Now I'm about four feet. The roads about four feet above. Above, uh, uh, I'll say five feet above the water, and it pushed it right up over the roads. We we had to get you know the town to pay a little bit. All right. Okay. That's, that's where we are. Thanks for filling us in on. Okay. That. This is the what the seventeenth is the next. Yes. Okay. At six thirty or at uh, seven. seven. We meet at seven. Regardless of traffic. Well, thank you for thank you for pissing me off. <laughs> it's not our goal. Uh, would you like to make a motion to close the meeting? <laughs> All in favor? Kill the Zoom. Bring the meeting for.